welcome back. In our last lecture, we have discussed on how to prepare the sample, prior to that we have discussed on the detectors. Uh, now or in today lecture, we will discuss how to take a good SEM image. So, what parameters need to be considered or to be chosen to collect a good SEM image. So, this is what we will discuss in today lecture, what is a, what is a good SEM image and how to capture a good SEM image after uh, discussing with uh, discussion on the preparation of different uh, type of sample for SEM. So, what is a good SEM image? A good SEM image is that which provides us the necessary information such as topography, surface morphology. Surface morphology is normally obtained with secondary ele electrons signal because secondary electrons are emerged from or near the surface of the materials. So, therefore, they can give us best surface information with a high resolution. Similarly, on the other hand, backscattered electrons provides us composition of the material because the yield of the backscattered electrons increases with increase in the atomic number in the specimen. So, higher atomic number means more secondary electron yield and those region will be much brighter that you have seen in previous uh, uh, lectures. So, the SEM image should provide the information that we need from our specimen. Second thing is that uh, so, uh, so, some wrong information such as artifacts, damage, external disturbances should not be present in the sample and we should have a gradation and brightness level that is appropriate in nature. So, this is what important for a good SEM image. Before going to show you a good PSEM image or SEM image, let us see what the probable region or causes which do not allow us to get a good SEM image. First problem is that image may morphs. You have seen in previous lecture, the, you can find not continuous a image, so, because when image morphs, you will see distortion. So, that could be due to charging up, charging up happens when the sample is insulating in nature or not conducting in nature. In addition to that, uh, image can morph if the beam, beam fluctuates, if the electron beam fluctuates, then the image will morph and also there could be external disturbances such as magnetic field or mechanical vibration or noises, this also could be probable reason for image to mop uh, while examining under microscope. Then second probable cause of distortion is surface structure is not clear. Surface structure will certainly be not clear if sample is insulating in nature because there will be charge build up on the surface and we would not able to get necessary signal from the surface of the specimen. It can also happen due to contamination also beam fluctuation. Third is distorted image due to charge up beam, beam fluctuation and external disturbance uh, and final one is cannot be focused. If you are unable to focus that could be that uh, if it is charging up then we would not able to see the surface actual surface therefore, we will not we will be unable to focus. Contamination is also another reason uh, that would not allow us to focus correctly on the specimen certainly beam fluctuation and other region will also be the cause that could not allow us to focus correctly on the specimen surface. And let first discuss what is charge up phenomenon. It is very common for non-conducting sample. It is uh, it will be clear especially when scan speed and magnification is changes changed. When you when we change the scan speed, scan speed means how fast electron beam is scan across the surface that we can decide how long electron beam to stay at one place and moving before moving to another places and collecting the signal. So, we can choose uh, a slower scan rate. So, uh, when we go for a slower scan rate, uh, our signal to noise ratio will be much improved. We will get, get much uh, higher secondary and backscattered electron yield therefore, giving us best resolution or best in uh, higher signal. Uh, 
similarly when magnification is ingest also when it is sample is non-conducting you will see the distortion in the image. The charging up lead to uneven brightness you had seen before one photographs how the uneven brightness and you can see you might see the bright lines or distorted image these are the uh, outcome if the surface uh, is uh, surface of the sample or sample is not conducting and charge is built up at the surface. How to avoid and reduce the charge charge up phenomena? So, there are different ways to reduce the charge up phenomena one is to reduce the acceleration voltage when we have a higher acceleration voltage uh, certainly more number of electrons are uh, striking to the surface. So, therefore, more accumulation of the charge will occur compared to when we apply lower acceleration voltage. Reduce the sample irradiation current that is also related to the acceleration voltage higher acceleration voltage we have more irradiation current. So, therefore, charge build up will be more. Apply a metal coating that we have discussed if we apply a metal coating then charge build up will not occur because those will pass to the ground. The electrons accumulated electrons will not be accumulated at the surface they will uh, transfer to the ground. Uh, and fourth is uh, the collect the image at a rapid scan rate when uh, when you we collect the image with a rapid scan rate then electron beam do not stay longer. So, it will not allow many electrons to accumulate at the surface therefore, uh, charge build up will be less. And fourth is observe images in low vacuum mode when you have a low vacuum mode again the energy uh, will of the uh, incident beam will be lesser and therefore, charge build up will be lesser. So, these are the different region different ways to avoid or reduce the charge build up phenomena uh, on the sample. Second thing is what is contamination? Uh, the process in which hydrocarbon gas molecule around the sample get deposited onto the specimen due to electron beam irradiation. Where this hydrocarbon gas molecule comes from? Uh, if you uh, remember previous classes we have discussed that we, ha we used a carbon tap adhesive tap that has carbon plus some polymers which are uh, used for to adhere the um, uh, tap to the uh, specimen and also to the stop. So, those, uh, um, those carbon or adhesive tap in high vacuum will produce hydrocarbons, will produce hydrocarbon, those polymeric materials will produce hydrocarbon. Once hydrocarbon are produced in inside the chamber or near the specimen, so there is hydrocarbon gas molecule when electron beam is coming and striking to those uh, hydrocarbon molecules, then that will deposit such hydrocarbon molecules that will first damage or degrade these hydrocarbon molecules and will deposit those carbons onto the onto the surface of the specimen. This happens, uh, this is what nothing but contamination. The hydrocarbon uh, gas molecules are present around the specimen, very few, but still that is good enough to produce contamination and in presence of the electron beam that will giving a coating on the specimen surface giving and when this happens then when, once you give a carbon coating onto the specimen the yield of the secondary electrons or other electron backscatter electron will reduce and thus those region will be less brighter or it will be looking uh, uh, it will be appearing as a darker that is what you see in the right side image here. The left side image uh, is the uh, image which is uh, irradiated beam is irradiated for a, a little longer then in the right side image you had a low magnification image magnification was reduced to show you the same region in the left side how it is looking as a darker darker or less brighter because of the contamination or deposition of hydrocarbon molecules hydrocarbon carbon on the surface of the specimen. So, in order to reduce this contamination what we can do improve the vacuum level inside the chamber if your vacuum level is high then you can certainly take out the uh, hydrocarbon molecules away from the chamber and then such deposition will not occur and reduce the gas molecule derived from the sample. It can also some of the um, sample can also also produce gas molecules. So, you should also uh, use either the adhesive tap or conductive paste in a manner that that would not produce gas molecules. In this way contamination can be reduced. Then another thing is the beam damage that will also distress the image. The electron beam irradiation could lead to thermal and chemical change in the specimen. Particularly this is um, much uh, strong in if the specimen is soft sample the specimen is a soft sample such as polymer biological sample then that beam damage is aggressive. 
So, one has to take care of this to make, to make sure that uh, you have actual sample that is you are viewing and you are not uh, doing the damage to the sample. Uh, and in, in, order, in order to reduce the beam damage, irradiation current should be reduced and a lower acceleration voltage should be applied. So, by applying a lower acceleration voltage, our energy of the electron beam will be low. So, therefore, we will do less damage to the sample. Most uh, commonly, uh, these polymer and biological sample are done with acceleration voltage in the range of 1 to 3 kilo electron volt, kilo volt. On the other hand, um, uh, like oxide and other metal kind of samples can be done at uh, more than 50 kilo volt. Another, re, uh, another way to reduce the beam damage is apply a metal coating, coating to improve the heat conductivity. You can also do a metal coating, a thicker metal coating will also help not to uh, damage uh, the biological sample or polymeric sample to a large extent. Outside disturbances such as vibration, it may come from the air conditioner or pumps used in inside the microscopy room, high voltage cable near the column. So, certainly we do not allow high voltage electrical cable uh, near the room and how to reduce the um, outside disturbances keep the microscope away from the magnetic field source such as transformer high power electrical cables. Use magnetic field cancellor like in most of the high resolution microscopy study uh, they use magnetic field cancellor especially for transmission electron microscope. Uh, use short working distance with high lens current it can another uh, this is what you can do which is under your control other things are not under our control sometimes operator cannot do anything which is already been uh, microscope is already been installed. Uh, short working distance when short working distance means sample is placed very close to the objective lens and high lens current uh, is provided then outside effect will be uh, not be strong uh, uh, in collecting the information. So, this is in this is the last part the use of short working distance and high lens current can is in the hands of operator which he can do. Other causes of abnormalities like uh, uh, sample mops, sample mops means sample may not fixed properly, may not be fixed properly, then it may also mop. Uh, screw of the specimen holder not tightened properly that you have seen that how we put the pin stop into the specimen holder and tighten the screw if it is not tightened properly. Uh, grounding will not be proper, therefore, sample can mops. Sample is improperly inserted into the specimen chamber, these are the region. Image fluctuates, irradiation current is low working distance is long in low vacuum mode, uh, cannot be focused misalignment of the optic axis and contamination of the objective aperture. These are the region which will cause abnormalities in collecting the SEM image. Now, coming back to what is a good SEM image, certainly we have discussed to uh, get the desired information uh, and let us see a SEM image. Here you see a SEM image, uh, this is a SEM, uh, FESM, uh, field emission scanning electron microscopy image of, a, of zinc oxide nanosphere. Uh, let us understand uh, more about this image. Um, here in this image as you see that brightness contrast are quite uniform throughout the region you have you are seeing it. One side it is not more bright, every side is equally focused and well focused. Uh, it is not too bright, brightness is not very high, contrast is not too high, it is an optimum optimum case, optimum range and therefore, uh, you see a uniformity across uh, the uh, image area. Now, what you see here, you see small small particle, actually they are spherical in nature, they are spherical in nature, they are certainly three dimensional that is why you would able, we would able to say it is a sphere. So, we are seeing the three dimensional image of zinc oxide nanosphere. Now, some of the important things here to see that uh, in the bottom, in the bottom bar there are some of the information is given. Uh, in the left most corner it is written width. So, width is uh, nothing but uh, width of this image, width from left to right this is 6.773 micrometer, so, width from left to right is our 6.673 micrometer. Then we have a scale bar, scale bar is 200 nanometer, there is a scale bar there is a white lines. So, this is a uh, in this is the uh, this taken as a reference or standard uh, that means uh, the length to know what is the size of individual sphere that you see inside this photograph. Like if this bar, this is 200 nanometer, then uh, you, you, we could see um, see that these spheres that you see in the photographs are of size less than uh, or approximately 50 nanometer in size, approximately 50 nanometer in size the diameter. 
diameter of the spheres are around 50 nanometer. So, we could tell what is the size of individual spheres inside uh, of our sample. Then magnification, magnification is in this case it is written uh, uh, 30 k x that means, 30,000 k x, 30,000 k x magnification is written 30,000 k x that means, sample is magnified 30,000 times. Then E h t that is electron high tension this image is taken at 5 kilo volt that is 5 kilo volt is written here that is electron high tension. Then W d W d is the working distance which is 7, uh, 7 uh, millimeter that is distance between the objective lens to the focus point on the specimen or the focal point on the specimen. So, th this is what all the sample surface distance between the objective lens to the specimen surface is our when the image is focused that is the working distance. Then signal this is a in lens the detector is uh, 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 placed in a in lens mode that is why the signal is in lens that and system vacuum is 10 to the minus uh, 1 in, into 10 to the minus 6 millibar. Uh, this is the uh, chamber uh, some specimen chamber vacuum in the 10 to the minus 6 range. So, this is what the different information on the uh, which is present on every photographs mostly in the SEM images. But the most important is that what you see is a three dimensional image and you are able to know what is the size of the objects on your sample. And here what you see these are uh, spherical structure or uh, three dimensional spheres. Sphere. But if you look at very carefully or closely you can see some of these uh, uh, spheres are hollow in nature. If you look at these places where I put uh, circle. Uh, you see some of the broken sphere from the broken sphere we can uh, tell that these are hollow in nature and the middle of this uh, sphere you see a darker contrast or less brightness indicating that these spheres are hollow in nature. But this hollowness you can only know when they are broken if they are not broken you would not able to tell whether these spheres are hollow or solid because in the SEM we see three dimensional image on the surface of the features. In order to uh, in order to prove that these are hollow in nature I am showing you another uh, magnified or high magnification image. Here you see this is uh, in a another location uh, of the sample in the edge side at the edge uh, some of the there is a non uniform growth uh, on the of the sample. Uh, uh, this was uh, this uh, zinc oxide uh, nanosphere was deposited by electro deposition process. Uh, and here what you see that um, the broken sphere clearly indicating their hollow, na hollow, hollow nature it is a completely hollow these are all hollow as you see clearly. Moreover what an additional things you can see that each individual sphere are for as you see small small bright dots small small bright dots that means these spheres are self assembled of very small or fine particles very fine particle very fine particle as you see these is a white dots these white dots are all uh, individual particles of size less than 5 nanometer of size less than 5 nanometer and the distance between two of those white dots or particles are are quite close less than 1 nanometer. So, these are magnified image here uh, you will see that the magnification is now here uh, 1000 k x 1 lux almost and then you will see here the scale bar is more now increased to 100 nanometer. So, uh, so this is what another important things if you notice carefully uh, here in the um, let us say uh, one sphere here one sphere here the middle portion in this cases is less bright as compared to the edge side edge sides are more brighter edge sides are more brighter here as compared to middle portion that is why it gives the brightness difference. Uh, this is edge size are more bright telling us how the tilt angle this is a secondary electron image the tilt angle playing important roles to create us a uh, three dimensional image. Because secondary electrons yield is more when tilt angle is more that is why this edges region where tilt angle is more is appearing as a bright. Moreover because this is hollow because it is a hollow the electron beam is penetrating to the sample and the um, um, secondary and backscattered electrons are coming out of the sample. So, in the edge region it will be much little thicker compared to the middle 
middle part that is why in the middle part you see little darker compared to the edge. Uh, uh, a um, expert microscopist would able to tell from this cunning electron microscopy also uh, whether it is, these are hollow or not. But for example, if you see compare this one with this one, here the intense and the brightness is almost uh, uh, equal across the uh, diameter, indicating that in this cases either this sphere is solid or the thickness of the wall of the sphere is uh, higher, th that means thickness is more. Then, if the thickness is more, you will see and uniform uh, brightness, certainly the brightness will be little higher at the edge. You see another three dimensional image showing you the different steps, different size of a uh, sample, little more magnified image, you see the steps measuring uh, in the nanometer level all three dimensional image that, 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 that is what you are viewing by the scanning electron microscope. You see another uh, examples here in the left side you see how uniform these um, uh, particles are um, particles are across the sample the brightness contrast are also presented in a uniform manner without uh, and total area is completely focused. In the right side a magnified image of such kind of a one uh, couple of spheres. Uh, and magnified image is showing that individual uh, particles are made up of uh, plate like structure, plate like structure which are hexagonal in nature, which are hexagonal. These individual sphere are made up of hexagonal plates, these are thinner sheets, uh, thin plates and they are coming together to produce a uh, spherical type of structure, spherical type of structure. So, the, the, these are few uh, microscopic images that you, that you have seen here now. Now, what are the main parameters that we must consider to collect the good, uh, good SEM image, which is uh, which are under the control of an operator. When operator goes to operate a microscope, he have certain control. He cannot control the sample, but he can change the parameters of the microscope to get the best image from the sample whatever the sample may be in getting the information that he desired or required. So, the main four parameters that operator normally controls are first is acceleration voltage. Acceleration voltage should be chosen on the type of sample to be examined and type of the information we need. Second is working distance, third is lens current and fourth is size of the objective aperture. These are all under the uh, operator control which he can vary to collect the SEM image. Let us first go one by one. Effect of acceleration voltage on the image quality. Now, we know if we increase the acceleration voltage, the interaction volume will change. Like higher the acceleration voltage, electron beam will penetrate more depth into the specimen and thus information will be collected from a larger area, not larger area, larger volume from the specimen. So, higher the acceleration voltage information will be collected from a larger volume. Second thing is that as we increase the acceleration of voltage the yield of backside electron and secondary electrons also will increase. Third thing is that there are several other things we will go one by one. Let us say first image information. Image information at the uh, we, if we have a lower acceleration of voltage then we will get surface image because at the lower acceleration of voltage our electron beam will not penetrate much depth into specimen. It will go strike to the surface and the signals other secondary most of the secondary electrons will generated from the surface. Therefore, we will get the information from a smaller volume which is near the surface giving us sur surface information. On the other hand, if acceleration voltage is high, electron beam will penetrate more deeper into the specimen therefore, we can get internal information. Second resolution, when acceleration voltage is lower, resolution will be lower. This we know uh, previously our resolution formula R is equal to 0.61 lambda divided by alpha, simplest formula. Here this lambda is nothing but wavelength which is directly proportional. At a lower acceleration of voltage, this lambda will be higher, bigger. 
on the other hand when acceleration of voltage is higher wavelength will be smaller when oblique wavelength will be smaller resolution r will be smaller result that means r smaller means the distance between two objects is smaller that means that that is the best resolution resolution is defined as when two objects can be distinguished without losing the sharpness this is what the resolution smaller the distance between two objects which we can see as a different or separate entities is called the resolution so so lambda will be smaller r will be smaller that means best resolution smaller the r better is the resolution this is what the resolution then specimen damage certainly specimen damage will be less when the acceleration voltage is low but when acceleration voltage is high then specimen will damage more for example if you are going to going for a soft sample or polymeric sample or organic sample certainly we have to choose low acceleration voltage otherwise we will uh, seriously damage the specimen on the, on the other hand if you are going for a metallic sample or oxide kind of sample then certainly uh, no issue we can choose higher acceleration voltage then contamination contamination easy to see but not easy to stick what is mean by easy to see because contamination will be sticking to the surface and we get surface information at a lower acceleration voltage therefore we will able to see the contamination uh, contamination on the surface but not easy to stick because uh, the contamination comes from the gas molecule when energy of the incident beam is higher they can uh, strongly damage or they can decompose the gas molecule and deposit more uh, deposit more when energy is more in this case acceleration voltage is low means they cannot do that much of uh, degradation to the organic molecule and that would not efficiently able to deposit on the surface of the sample therefore not easy to stick on the other hand uh, not easy to see but occurs more uh, more a contamination will occur more when acceleration voltage is high not easy to see means because the contamination will be deposited to the surface and our beam is penetrating more in depth to the specimen therefore not easy to see information most of the information is coming from um, below the surface then charge up certainly we have discussed this lower acceleration voltage charge up will be less on the other hand higher acceleration voltage charge up will be more and then emission of the x-rays we have not discussed this but we will discuss it later emission x, uh, of x-rays is lower in case of uh, low acceleration voltage but on the other hand higher acceleration voltage emission will be high. So, these x-rays uh, when electron beam strikes to the sample in addition to oh, the secondary electrons and backscattered electrons BIC we also generate quite a large amount of characteristic x-rays. These characteristic x-rays tells us about the composition of the material quantitatively. So, in most of the SEM we use EDS or energy dispersive spectroscopy to measure the uh, type of the atoms present in the sample and its um, how much quantity of the sample present in the specimen that we will discuss. So, those type of EDX measurements requires uh, acceleration voltage to be high because more number of characteristic X-ray will generate and more number of X-ray generated means our X-ray signal will be higher that would allow us to uh, efficiently uh, quantify the element present in the specimen. So, effect of acceleration voltage also have a uh, role to the prop current and prop diameter. Here we could see uh, the three um, there is four plots uh, in the top left here you see 30 kV then 10 kV then 1 kV we have three different gone and gone have a role to the uh, prop diameter and uh, sub prop current. As you see as you see here at when we have a higher acceleration voltage higher acceleration voltage or prop current prop current is much higher even prop diameter is small for this is for field emission gun. Then we have short key gun, then we have thermionic gun. We also have another gun called LAV6 gun. LAV6 gun is in the middle, it comes here LAV6 gun. So, important uh, point here to note that uh, as we are decreasing the acceleration of voltage, as we are decreasing the acceleration of voltage, certainly prop current is decreasing because less number of electrons is striking to the sample, certainly prop current will be decreasing if the prop current decreases below a certain optimum value we will not able to generate enough number of secondary and backscattered electrons. So, signal will be poor that we cannot detect. 
So, we want prop current to be higher at the same time if the prop current higher then we can make the prop diameter to be smaller. Prop diameter smaller, prop diameter smaller is essential criteria for getting the high resolution image. If we have a uh, electron beam with a very finest prop then we are collecting information from a smallest area, finest area and then our electron beam going to next steps. Then we will see the difference of the signal generated from each spot, smallest spot then our resolution will be better. That, 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 that is the reason why um, we, we have seen before how cold field emission gives us the best resolution in the microscopy. Cold field emission gives the best resolution because it has it can produce high prop current even at very small prop diameter. That is why best resolution is achieved with cold field emission gun. After that we have short key emission gun, then we have LAV6 gun, then we have thermionic gun. This is about uh, and, and second point had that as you have seen here with decreasing the acceleration voltage the prop current decreases and in addition prop you, we also need prop diameter to be more to be studied uh, to get enough signal. So, effect of acceleration voltage on the prop current is shown uh, in these plots. So, we will uh, discuss more about uh, how what happens with different type of uh, acceleration voltage for different kind of sample uh, in our next lecture. So, let today stops here.